a YouTube subscriber wants to know how dense with worms a worm farm can get before the worms stop reproducing. We're going to tackle that and a little more on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. Okay, we've got a single topic coffee and compost video today. I normally like to do two or three questions, but the question today kind of deserves its own episode. We've got a YouTube subscriber who asked how dense worms can get before they stop reproducing. This question shows me that this dude kind of knows his stuff because he understands that at some point, the worms regulate their own reproduction when conditions don't call for a higher population. His question though is, at what point does that happen? Okay, real fast, if you're new to Burma composting, I wanna send you the Worm Farm Startup Guide. It's a cool little PDF that's gonna help you start up a small worm bin, just like this one. Uh, to recycle your food scraps. And you might find a nice discount code in the guide that you can use to get an urban worm bag, worms, or other products a little bit more cheaply. Just click this little link above my left shoulder. It's gonna take you down to the video description where you click another little link where you can get sign up to get that guide immediately. You can also check the top link uh, in the video description to get that guide. Okay, back to the topic. So I think now is a good time to reset and understand how composting worms work. They are epigeic, which is Greek for on the earth. These guys tend to stay above the soil, but still working away under and inside uh, layers of loose organic matter like leaf litter on the forest floor and manures and whatnot. So because they stay near the top of their habitat, we need to worry about area, not volume when it comes to worm density. So in the US, we would measure this in terms of pounds per square foot. A quick geometry refresher. To find your surface area when measuring in inches, multiply the length by the width, then divide that number by 144 to find your square footage. Okay, so when people are starting an urban worm bag or any other worm bin, I tell them they should start with one half to one pound of worms per square foot. Below a half pound per square foot, the theory is that worms in a vermicomposting bin wouldn't reproduce that efficiently. So that one half to one pound per square foot number gives plenty of opportunity for the worms to make a love connection. They're just kind of living in dense enough population. But the worms are highly adaptive creatures and much more adaptive than we give them credit for. And when the conditions aren't supportive of a greater population, they will stop breeding and the population will stop growing. Worm density is only one of those conditions though. If the food is scarce or the pH is off balance or there are some otherwise kind of noxious conditions inside the bin, the worms aren't gonna be wanting to make new worms. So let's assume everything uh, is going perfectly on a worm bin. Temps are at 75 degrees, it's moist and we got plenty of food. Think of an all-you-can-eat buffet in South Florida in March, but for worms. So what is the top density we can expect? I'd say about three to four pounds per square foot is a reasonable assumption, and that's pretty good. At this point, reproduction is going to at least slow and then come to a stop maybe soon after. I've seen claims from some people that you can get up to six pounds, and maybe these folks are seeing that, but even in the densest of my own worm bins, I just don't see that. Now, here's the important thing especially if you're just starting out from a composting, because you're gonna wanna like save the earth today. Just because worms might be able to live in populations as dense as three or four pounds per square foot, you shouldn't start with that many. You're gonna wanna start with uh, as many as you can to kind of help increase the processing capacity of your worm farm. But here's the thing, you shouldn't assume that you've got perfect conditions. You're likely gonna wanna overfeed your bin at first. If your bin's outdoors, you're gonna be battling temperatures one way or another. It's just gonna take you some time to dial things in for your worm farm. And if they are dialed in when you try to put six pounds of worms in your urban worm bag or whatever other bin that you use, you're gonna get a mass escape and you're gonna lose a pretty good bit of money in the process. Okay guys, I hope that was helpful. If you haven't subscribed, please do that now and maybe leave your own questions that I can get to on a future episode. We'll see you then.